All right guys, I'm back here in the back uh, where, where all my tackle is in the garage and getting ready for the season, got a lot of stuff going on, but I wanted to take a little, little time to explain to you a little wintertime secret that we've talked about before. A lot of people have talked about it. You've probably heard about it, but it's still a secret because nobody is really doing it. A few people are doing it. And what I'm talking about is tight lining is definitely a colder water, winter time type technique. What I mean by tight lining is that you take a little small uh, hair, craft hair type jig, Spro makes a fat fly. It works really well for that. Um, you can get handmade ones like this right here that are specifically made for doing that kind of stuff. Or a lot of guys are tight lining just a jig head and a little gulp minnow. That is very popular. But you're like, look, dude, I don't want to have to get all this special stuff, but I'd still like to tight line. All you really need is a Ned rig if you if you hook it up properly. Now this is a like i said cold water technique this is a ned rig this is a little ned bomb if you've got a trd or ned ned bomb it doesn't really matter uh you really only need like kind of two two weights the eighth ounce weight is what most of the anglers are going to be using and that's when you're going to be fishing anywhere from 10 to say 25 feet of water and if you want to be fishing a little bit shallower, let's say five to 10 or 12 feet of water, you might want to go up to a, a 16th ounce. But we're imitating Diane Shad, really slow moving shad. Uh, so you're, you might be thinking, why don't you throw like a little small boot tail, like a little shockwave or a little Kitek? Those work. But I'm telling you, there are times when tight lining, either that little craft hair jig or a Ned rig or one of those little minnows, one of those little gulp minnows, I mean, that thing is hard to beat. So I'll show you the big difference. Let's, I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab one of these right here. The big difference between when it's just a Ned rig and when it is a, an actual tight line jig is tying a loop knot. Now I brought out my spectacles, boys and girls, I brought out my spectacles so I can tie a loop knot so really all you're gonna do, tie yourself a little overhand knot in there. I'm gonna tie a little quick loop knot. I've done videos on loop knots before. Uh, there's a couple different ones that you can tie, but I'm gonna just tie this one right here because the loop knot is the real key to that, that tight line technique. And if you remember Jason Christie, won the Bassmaster Classic last year in Lake Hartwell, month of March, so it wasn't like it was super cold water. He caught a number of his fish early in the day. Uh, he, you know, basically his limit getters were on a little sonar minnow, a new, a new bait that they're, they're making at Pradco over there. It is very similar to this Ned Bomb in the way that it functions, and he was tying that loop knot, just like that right there, on the front of his bait, he would throw it out there and he would look at those fish on live scope. He would cast that, that bait out there and he would let it pendulum down. That's why it's called tight lining. You kind of let it pendulum down on a tight line. Then when you get near those fish, you start reeling real slow and you just kind of shake that rod tip like that. And that bait with the, uh, with the little loop knot, just kind of just kind of veers along like a like a dying bait fish right in front of their face he would he was snapping up a limit in no time and then he would go largemouth fish later in the day and catch his jig so that's just a recent episode from showing you how that that tight lining really really puts fish in the boat and you don't have to you don't have to look at him on forward facing sonar there's a lot of big hubbub about live scope forward facing sonar yada 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 this is a great tool to use tight lining on those forward facing sonar fish, but you don't need to. This has been a viable, good, good technique for many, many years, way before forward facing sonar. It was an East Tennessee secret for a number of years, um, but that's, that's all it is right there. Light line is key, no bigger than eight pound test. Six pound test or what a lot of anglers are throwing down there. And I'll, I'll just show you real quick on here. 
one key, your loop knot, you do not want to make it so long that it catches the hook point. As long as that loop is shorter than the hook point, you're good to go. Uh, but you're just going to, again, you're going to cast it out there, let that bait pendulum back. You're going to take that rod tip and just kind of just kind of just shake it like that as you're slowly reeling it. You want to have a, at least a medium to medium light action rod, a pretty light rod. You don't need to set the hook very hard. You're going to be catching these fish out of open water. You can throw it around cover if you want to. If you don't have forward facing sonar, you can throw the tight line around docks, deeper docks especially, deeper channel swing banks, around bridges, Places like that, that's where you're going to be throwing it, or you could use it on forward-facing sonar. But there's the, the tight line Ned rig. Go ahead and just, just take your Ned rig, put a loop knot on it, and you will be tight lining as long as you work it properly. Cold water, pre-spawn, you might be surprised how many, catch, how many fish you can catch really quickly on that tight line, baby. Heard it here, baby.